This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on examples using while loops in MATLAB. So what a while loop is, is as opposed to a for loop, which loops through a set number of um, times, a while loop will continue to go through the loop until it meets a condition, and that's the, the while condition. As long as the while condition is met, it will continue to run. Um, so for this video, I just want to go through a few simple examples of, of how these can be used. Uh, so the first thing is that a while loop is actually capable of doing the same thing that a for loop does. It's just coded a little bit differently. So um, if we want to do a while loop doing the same function as a for loop, what we can do, so let's say... while loop as a for loop, what we can do is, in this case, we need to handle the indexing ourselves. So whereas in the for loop it happened automatically, with a while loop we have to do it ourselves. So if we wanted it to start at 1, we need to say that. So set our, our index variable equal to 1, then go into our loop. So it has to be initialized outside of the loop, then we have our while loop. And we type the statement while and then space and then followed by the condition that we need to meet in order to continue to loop. Uh, this condition also will need to be met in order to enter the loop at all. So a while loop doesn't necessarily do anything um, if the condition is not met. So in this case, the condition that we want to use, let's say we want to loop from 1 to 5. So in that case, we would want to continue to loop as long as i is less than or equal to 5. Inside the loop, um, we don't actually need to do anything for this example, so I'm just going to show what that i does. But in a real problem, we could use this i index um, to store things into a, a vector or whatever purpose we're trying to achieve with this loop. But the last thing that we need to do is increment our index. Now, we can do this with this statement. So i will take the value of i plus 1. And what that will do is each time this statement is executed, i will be, have 1 added to it. So it starts at i equals 1, then it will become 2. When i equals 2, it will become 3. Um, so then what we need to do then to end our loop is use the end. And then what this will do is we start off with i equals 1, it will hit this line and then it checks and it says alright is 1 less than or equal to 5? Yes. Because the answer was yes we enter the loop. When it hits the loop it's just going to tell us what i is at that point in time. Then it's going to come here and i is going to uh, become 2. And then we go back to the top and then it says is 2 less than or equal to 5? Yes. Enters the loop, does that, comes down here, becomes 3 and so on. When we hit 5, it will say yes, enter the loop, become 6, and at that point it comes up here, 6 is not less than or equal to 5, so it will leave the loop, it will end, and then we will continue on. So let's even just see what that value of i is after the loop. Um, so let's run this. Inside the loop we got i equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the last statement, i equals 6, came from here. So at the end of the loop, i actually ends up being 6. But that's because it hit this condition, didn't meet it, and exited the loop. So that's one example. And this type of structure can be used in place of, uh, just to show you for comparison, for i equals 1 colon 5, i end. And this will do the same thing. So if we run that, we get the i equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's one one example. Now, while loops are useful for more than just that. So typically if you're doing something like that, you would have used a for loop. Um, now, there's other cases where a while loop might be more practical, where you really are trying to figure out when a certain condition happens. So this next example is, if I want to find the first power of 2 that is greater than 100. So what we can do then is we can use the same idea that we used before. I'm going to start with some variable 
and I'm going to start that at 2. We want powers of 2, so we'll start with 2. And then my while condition, I want to check and see if I really want to know when x is greater than 100. But in this case, because I want it greater than 100, I really want to loop while I'm less than 100. Because then what I can do inside my loop is take my variable, multiply it by 2, and then once this condition for x less than or equal to 100 is no, no longer true, we will have hit that first time when it's greater than 100. So if we then just look at what x equals, well, let's just look at every value. Let's run this. So x, we had 2, less than 100, yes. Entered the loop, it became 4. That's what we see output here. Then we loop again. Is 4 less than 100? Yes, it becomes 8, 16, 32, 64. Then once we hit that 64, that was less than 100. Comes into the loop, multiply it by 2. Now it's 128. Comes back up, checks this condition. Is 128 less than or equal to 100? No. And so now, once we exit that loop, x t is going to take this value of 128, which is the first power of 2 that is greater than 100. So this is uh, another possible use of a for loop. Now notice, we didn't necessarily know how many times we needed to multiply by 2. That's actually kind of what we wanted to find. So we couldn't have really done this with a for loop. Um, so that's a, a, a practical use of the while loop. I'm going to do one more example now. Um, and this is something that while loops are used for. So use a while loop to check for a condition. So this is something that's useful when you have um, things that are coming in as some kind of input uh, to really check to see if that input is valid. Um, and so there's a few commands in MATLAB that you might not be familiar with. Um, and the first is input. So uh, the way this input command works is it will give me um, a value here based on a response from the user. So what this function takes as an input is a, is a prompt. So I want to ask the user to enter a positive number. And so the text that I put in here in single quotes to make it a string, the text that goes in there will be displayed on the screen and then it will wait for the user to enter a number. Now we're asking him to enter a positive number so when the user enters this value we don't really know what they're going to put in. So it's good to have a check in here, especially if it's going to cause problems later in your code. So what we can do then is put a while loop here and say while y. And remember, we want to check kind of the opposite of what we're looking for. So we want it to be positive. So we want to loop in the case where it's not positive. So less than or equal to 0. So if y is if they entered in a non-positive number, so 0 or a negative number, we want to go back into this loop and it's usually good to tell the user that something went wrong. So we can use the display command DISP and say that was not a positive number. Maybe really um, emphasize that. And then what we can do is let's just ask again. So we can use the same statement inside the loop. A lot of times with while loops you may see this. You have a command before to start um, with the condition but then you do it again inside your loop. So we ask them again and then we go back in our loop and check. So um, if we end this loop here what will happen is, is if we don't enter a positive number, it'll come in the loop and it'll ask again. And if we don't enter a positive number, it's going to keep looping until you give it a positive number. It, it will not let you um, get through this with a negative or zero number. So then um, maybe we want to reward the user for getting it right and say that is a positive number. So this way we'll know when we actually have done it right. So let's give this a run. 
So what happens is down in your command window, you get this prompt. So enter a positive number. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you minus 2. That's not a positive number. Give me a positive number. How about 0? Not a positive number. Minus 10? Not a positive number. So there's no way I can break through this. Maybe if I do something real small. Zero, 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 one. No, not a positive number. But if I give it 1, 3, there you go. That's a positive number. And now it will continue on with the code. Uh, so these were just some examples of uh, some basic uses of while loops, um, and we will talk more about fancier uses of these. All right, thank you.